here today in a swine research facility in Wisconsin, and I'm with Dr. Stacy Scramlin, an assistant professor of animal science at South Dakota State University. And you might be wondering why we've got wet hair on this video. But swine facilities like this one have very strict biosecurity procedures. And so we had to shower completely before we came in and wear clothes and shoes that were provided by the facility. And then we're going to have to leave them here. But by doing this, we protect the health of the pigs who are in this facility. Now, this is a research facility, but it's actually a great place to see various housing systems in place. And that's what we're here to talk about today, is the question of how we house pregnant sows in particular. So Dr. Scramlin, here we've got sows that are housed in individual stalls. Why do we house sows in individual stalls? We house sows in individual stalls to be able to give them the individual care that they need. It really allows us, rather than having them in a moving pen where there's a lot of moving pieces and parts, to be able to see each one individually so we can monitor her health, uh, her nutrition, uh, address any issues that may be coming up. We can also uh, maintain or determine where she's at in her pregnancy and things of that nature. So it really allows us to give individual care to each animal and, uh, and so it has some benefits to it in that respect. Now are, are pregnant sows aggressive? They are. That's actually another really good point. Um, pregnant sows can be very aggressive. I mean, uh, they, in a large setting or in a group setting, I'm sorry, they'll actually dis dis turn, determine, sorry, a pecking order. I mean, there will be some sows that will be much more can be much more aggressive, and so this allows them to not be as aggressive for, let's say, pen space uh, with one another because they're individually stalled. But also, feed is a big one too, where they'll be competitive over feed depending on the time of the day and things of that nature. So, um, by having them individually housed, again, we give them that individual care, and we can hopefully alleviate some of the uh, aggression issues that you can sometimes see. How are the sows getting their food and water? They're actually receiving their feed right there in the trough, and along with fresh water uh, that they have continually. And so, um, again, the goal there is just to make sure we can know exactly what she's eating every day. So here we've got some gilts. These are females that have never been pregnant? Correct. And what are the benefits of being housed in a group pen like this? Well, the benefits, of course, are that they can move around just a little bit more. They have a little more freedom when it comes to that. Uh, of course, some of the disadvantages would be that we can't always tell exactly what they're eating. I couldn't tell you what that one was eating compared to that one. You kind of have to do a, a general uh, assessment for the whole pen. Um, but like I said, you, you can see that there's some more movement. They do get a little more social interaction with one another by being able to have uh, more pigs within the pen. And what's really interesting is these pigs have a lot of room in these group settings, but I'm seeing a lot of them laying next to each other and having a lot of physical contact. You know, even when they're piglets, they're, they, you'll see that contact a lot in pigs, that they'll actually lay next to one another. Every now and then you'll see one that goes off by themselves, but for the most part, you usually see them having contact like that. And so, um, again, when, whether it's a, in a group housing or an individual, like we saw already, uh, again, you kind of see that they're usually quite close to one another. We hear a lot of talk about free-range pork. What would happen if we raised gestating sows in a free-range setting? Gestating sows in a free-range setting is possible. It just needs a lot larger land area. Each one of those sows is going to need her area to be able to roam around and things like that. Um, but some of the biggest problems with it, first of all, whenever somebody's beginning an, an operation is you have to consider climate. I mean, that's huge. Uh, somebody who has a, wants to do free range in Fargo is going to have a far larger time or harder time than somebody who wants to do it in Fresno. So you really have to, climate's a big issue, um, predators are another issue, there's all kinds of things that come with being in an outdoor setting, whereas being in an indoor or, um, setting we can control climate and things like that. We, even when it's the dead of the winter or the heat of the summer, we can make sure that we're maintaining a good uh, temperature that's keeping that sow in as comfortable uh, position as possible, again, to keep her productivity, to keep her in a... Um, in a, in a healthy state. What has the American Veterinary Medical Association said about the different types of sow housing? What the American Veterinary Medical Association has determined uh, in some work that they've looked at is that from a, a stress standpoint, that there's actually not any difference between the systems uh, as far as the amount of stress that's been put on the sow. And really what we try to focus on is informing people that it's not necessarily one system's better than another, 
We like to think that that one's got to be better than this one. Really, they're, they may both work just fine. It's really the management of those systems, the way in which they're being instituted. If you're using a larger system or they're using a larger group system, it's just important to make sure that the animal's health and well-being is, in fact, being monitored well. Uh, and so there's not one way, and that's actually what the AVMA, AVMA came out with, is that they said, really, all of the systems are very functional. They just need to be, make sure that they're being managed properly and the stress levels aren't different. If a consumer is concerned about the welfare of pigs in various housing systems, what should they do? The first thing I tell people to do is get the information. I mean, make sure you're getting it from a non-biased source. Uh, we mentioned the American Veterinary Medical Association would be one. The university extension programs are great. That's what they're there for, is to help provide that information to consumers. And if that's something that's very important to you, we respect the fact that you have that choice. When, the, when a consumer goes to the grocery, grocery store, they have the opportunity to decide if they want to buy free-range pork. Oh, um, and they have that option. So vote with your uh, consuming dollar. Okay, so you can pick what reflects your ethical views. Absolutely. Great advice. Thank you.